Today's episode is brought to you by The Black Cabinet by Jill Watts. It's the Mocha Girls Read National Book Club's June Book of the Month. Visit their website and join in today. Masterfully researched and dramatically told, The Black Cabinet brings to life a forgotten generation of leaders who fought for post-Reconstruction racial discrimination and whose work served as a bridge that civil rights activists traveled to achieve for the victories of the 1950s and 60s. The Black Cabinet is a dramatic, full-scale examination of a forgotten moment that speaks directly to our own. The Black Cabinet is available now in hardcover, ebook, and audiobook from your favorite bookseller. Learn more by visiting mochagirlsread.com. I am so excited because today we have a second sponsor. Today's episode is also brought to you by Novel Gazing, the newest literary fiction podcast from Book Riot, North America's largest independent book site. Novel Gazing is your destination for all things literary fiction bringing you news from the world of fiction and recommendations for under-the-radar reads, works in translation, buzzy books, and more. Stay in the know, expand your TBR and your view of literary fiction, and of course, have some laughs with the host, Mary Kay McBrayer and Louise Johnson. Subscribe to Novel Gazing wherever you get your podcast. Welcome back, readers. Today on Book Chat, we are diving into the reader topic of DNFs, aka did not finished titles. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Tamara Ford, and welcome to Book Chat here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, please support this podcast by sharing it with some book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. That will really help me out, and I appreciate you for doing so. The uncut video version of this podcast is available now on Patreon. Join us there for exclusive videos, including this podcast after show, where we get even more candid with our opinions. So if you're at all interested in that, you'll need to come on over to Patreon and sign up. We've got a fun hour ahead of us, so let's get started. Joining me is feature co-host Casey from Heart Full of Ink. Welcome back, Casey. Hello, I'm so excited to be here. Yay, I'm excited because today we have a, a fun topic. We are discussing DNFs, aka books we did not finish. Uh, do you do it? Do you not do it? Why or why not? We're just going to dive on in and just see what comes up. So you'll definitely want to <laughs> hang around until the end of this discussion because we have some fun readers react comments and a voicemail on this topic. So obviously we want to hear from you as well. So be sure to follow us on our social media or join Shelf Addiction Official so you will get the next call to action and you can be a part of Readers React. Yes. Okay, so let's Thank jump you. in. DNFs. DNFs. Oh, this is a topic that has been like a point of contention for a lot of people. And only really? recently have I, like last year, did I just make a new stance on DNFs. Oh, I've been DNFing for most of my life. Really? <laughs> it was ne- really. When I was a kid, I had to finish the book because I felt like it was necessary. But no, after a while, I was like, these books are crappy. I don't have to read them. And I stopped. Oh, my gosh. You're you're like one of the few people that I think have had that point of view for a long time. For a long time. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. But there's just like, there are too many books, too many good books in the world to read crappy books. Yeah, that's what I say. Like, time is money. Time is precious mm-hmm. now. And if you're not feeling it, let it go. <laughs> let, let it go. go. And I used to have this thing, like really, um, I used to feel like I have to finish it to mark it on Goodreads. Or I have to finish it, you know, because I don't want to feel like I'm cheating or, you know, so then it's like, well, how much do I read? How, you know, so I even said that. Do you have um, sometimes? So it depends on the book. I mean, I'm an editor, so when I pick up a book, I feel like it's immediately just like poorly written grammar problems on page one. I will put it down and walk away because I don't want to deal with that. Um, But, you know, if it's an eh kind of book and I'm like, I'm not sure if I like it or want to keep going, I will try to push myself 
Um, I try to get to roughly 20% of an ebook, which is usually, you know, like 50 or so pages in a physical book. But if it's just not hooking me, then I will put it down and walk away. I um, go about a hundred pages, and I know for me that's a lot. That is a lot because that's that is a, a third of the book. But I think okay, so I have given up in less than a hundred pages before. But I think the hundred pages is my sweet spot, and for an audio book, it's about an hour. And I don't yeah. know how many pages that translates to, but if it's, if I'm listening for an hour and I'm like, what the hell is this? I can't mm-hmm. do it. I'll just cut it off. Um, yeah. But Absolutely. yeah, I used to just, it, I guess we could talk about that a little bit. Like, mm-hmm. do you count DNF books? I do. You do. If I've read, you know, like 20, 25%, I mark it as read and I put the little DNF comment in my review just so I know. Mm-hmm. But I tried it and put it down. And that way I like keep a track of it because I want to know what I tried reading. Mm-hmm. Um, and I spent the time reading it and it counts for me. Yeah. Because I, I always thought if I DNF it, I don't think I can count it. So I think that was part of my hang up. I'm like, I want the, I want the book count. <laughs> <laughs> it counts. It counts. You spent the time reading or listening to it. Yeah. That's true, because I think um, like a lot of those old mentalities about, you know, people being really snooty about what's acceptable and not acceptable mm-hmm. as far as books. A lot of that is finally starting to change, which is oh, a good, good thing, I yeah. think. Absolutely. It's a good thing. So one thing that I won't DNF, I don't think I've ever dnf a book club read. I feel like. I just have to finish it because I'm expected to talk about it. At that point, if it's like really, really bad, I I just skip to the end. Like, I don't, I don't want to waste my time. I don't give a fuck. (laughs) I just, (laughs) all right, it's bad. Let me skip to the end. If I can figure out everything that happened in the last 200 pages Mm -hmm. at the very last chapter, then you know it was a terribly written book and you Mm -hmm. can still get away with it in book club. Oh my gosh. (laughs) <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it. Do that. Do that. Yes. Because I have forced myself to read. I mean, you know, I was in like two and three book clubs at one point, but now I'm down to just what we do here on the podcast in one real world book club. Mm-hmm. So um now that I've reduced the amount of book clubs I'm in, it's better. But I used to read like, I don't know, four or five books a year that I really didn't care for no, between why? all the book clubs. Because I'm like, why? I have to talk about it. <laughs> and I, if you I hate it, why are you torturing yourself? I know, but I feel like I've made the commitment to do it. And I don't want to be the one person at book club that's like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> There's always people. There are people who show up at book club who haven't even opened the book. I know. I know. That is like my type A, you know, I don't want to be looking dumb at any time <laughs> personality. <laughs> That's what this that is. is my reader. There's too little time in the world to read shitty books. Yeah. Just, no. I know. But like, for example, I'll give you a, a really okay. good example. So um, maybe it was. March, April. No, I don't know. I lose track now. Anyway, so we were reading The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern. Mm -hmm. And that was a difficult read. Okay. Um, Okay. It was intense and slow and lots of detail. And I could have stopped easily, but I'm like, okay, I want to like this book and I want to talk about it, especially since it was my pick. Mm -hmm. I can't DNF my (laughs) pick. Okay. So, yeah. um, so yeah. I read it and then at book club, I swear. So it was like 10 ish of us on the call, the zoom call and three of us finished it. Oh, wow. So uh, the others might've gotten 20 or 30 pages <laughs> in. Maybe there were a couple, maybe one or two that got halfway and I'm like, Oh my God. See, I have to, I have to finish it. Cause then I was able to talk about it with the two people that did finish it. So mm-hmm. I, even though I would have preferred to stop, <laughs> I didn't. 
Oh God. So is that so, different because that was my pick? So it was Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's <Okay>. fair. <laughs> I understand. I was in a book club and I picked um what is it? Not the girl you marry by Andy J. Christopher, which I just have right here on my desk. Cause anyway, only one other person showed up to book club and she quit maybe like 20 pages in because she said it was too vulgar for her. And she's like, they just say the word dick too much. And like, not even in a sexual context, they're just calling each other dicks. And I was like, yeah, that's fair. I find that hilarious. You can quit. It's fine. Wow. So, but I mean, that's okay. So this is another topic, but I'm like, I'm <laughs> sorry, but don't you know what you're about to get into when you start the book? She didn't. I don't think she's ever read a romance in her life. And oh. I was like, this is a fun millennial kind of sexy, not that bad. And like, yeah, no, she just. Oh my God. What if they were using the other name for Dick? <laughs> she probably would have had a fiasco, like oh. a heart attack, a conniption, all of the above. A conniption. She would have held her pearls. And, uh. <laughs> That's yeah. funny to me. Oh my gosh. It was so funny. I was like, oh, oh, you only got 20 pages in because somebody called somebody else a dick. Oh yeah. No, you would not like the oh. rest of this book. Mm. Well, yeah, I guess if you're offended by something in the book, then you should definitely stop reading. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, there there are those books where um, I'll enjoy it and I like the style of writing, but then they just say something so fucking racist or offensive or just, and you just, I have to stop and be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Mm -hmm. Like, did you not have any beta reader? Did your editor not call you out on this? Like, what the Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's another reason why, like, this is kind of another tangent, but it's true about DNFs. Mm -hmm. I'm really, really finicky about accepting books to review now because Good. I hate to have to go back and have to say to somebody, I could not finish this book. So in my mind, I'm going to be really, really picky about what I want to read or what I commit to reading because that's another reason why in the past I would mm -hmm. read books I didn't like because I committed to reviewing it. <clears throat> Ooh. But, oh, yes. I remember those days. <laughs> right. But now I'm like, I'm sorry. I, I can't. It doesn't sound good enough to me. The, I mean, and mm -hmm. the cover doesn't look good enough. Um, mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> the synopsis oh. doesn't sound good enough. <laughs> that is a whole nother tangent. Oh, I know. I'm just... Judging a book by its cover, judging a book by its blurb, mm -hmm. judging a book by who the other readers are. Mm -hmm. It's a thing. You guys will talk about thing. We'll talk about that on another episode. But yes. I mean, but for all whatever reasons I find, I'm like, I just turn stuff down. I just because I, I know I have a after reading for so many years and reviewing for so many years, you start to get a gut instinct. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is going to be a DNF. I know it. So I can't, I can't oh, yeah. do it. <laughs> oh yeah. No, I can pick up any book and read the first page. And usually by the first page, I can tell you if I'm going to like it or if I'm going to hate it. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately for you guys that aren't seasoned <laughs> readers, um, sorry, you might have to yeah, read it. Sorry. More, but... <laughs> sorry. It took me over 20 years to develop. Yeah, but you'll learn. You'll you'll get you'll there. Learn. You'll get yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm like now, I just even with my own personal picks, like I really try to. <sighs> I don't. I don't know. I don't take uh, recommendations as quick as I used to. Like a lot has changed about my reading mm -hmm. habits in the last couple years. Oh, absolutely. It is con. Mine is constantly evolving, mm -hmm. and yeah, I only take recommendations from certain people. Um, if I'm in any sort of book group and people are raving about a certain book, I might like go open the first page and see if it's worth it. And mm -hmm. Nine times out of 10, it's not, mm -hmm. but that's also me being judgy and picky. And Girl, I'm picky too. I think we are both <laughs> picky. That's why I think we get along on this yes. topic so well, because yes. I don't tend to like what the crowd likes mm -hmm. a lot of the time. Mm -mm. So, and I mean, that boils down to personal choices and what we like and 
You know, I love paranormal books, but there are a lot of really shitty paranormal books. Mm -hmm. So I only go to specific people for my recommendations because I know they like the same paranormals as me. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go to just some random book club and be like, hit me up with your paranormal wrecks. And oh, or they'll send me like Anne Rice. I'm like, nope, I'm out. <laughs> no, I don't want those vampires. You'll get a whole bunch of garbage and you're going to be like, you like that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> no judgment, though, to each other. No mom. judgment. No judgment. Mom. Like but, whatever you want to like. If yeah. you like those freaking alien breeder things go read those i'm gonna stay away (laughs) yeah but that also kind of helps you to like not have to dnf as many books when you find a few people that you really have common reading Mm -hmm. taste um so like with you in fantasy or paranormal i feel like i can count on you for a good selection even for contemporary romance i think you could give me a good selection I would give you a better selection just because I'd be like, okay, so this one's the racist trash. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, uh, this is the good stuff. This is kind of slow, but silly. And you know, this is the kinky stuff. And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I call people out. I do. Mm-hmm. And I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> because, you know, I, and that is one of my hangups still is calling people out because I try to be very fair. Mm-hmm. But I also will crit- criticize when something is wrong. But I also wish sometimes I was more less PC and more like, fuck this, it's awful. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. I am really open here on the podcast because yeah. most people I know don't follow me here. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> no. It's like, this is my secret space. <laughs> this is my secret safe space. Oh, I can call God. people out here. I won't do it on Goodreads because fuck that noise. Mm-hmm. I know all those trolls will trash me on Goodreads. And so I'm just like, I just use it to keep track of my reading. And I have like over 300 notifications that I'm never going to look at. <laughs> I'm just like, okay. I don't get yeah, shit. I don't use Goodreads for that either. I just, um, for, you know, social anything, I just mm-hmm. keep track of my books and that is all. Um, but yeah, I, mm, that's another topic. We should talk about Ooh. reviewing books one day. You guys, we are oh just making goodness. a list of topics right now. <laughs> if just you guys you. have any suggestions, let us know. And we can probably talk about it for an hour. I know. We could. Yeah, we got opinions. Oh, yeah. And knowing that Casey is feel safe from all her people <laughs> in this podcast, that is hilarious to me. Oh my God. I don't know. I never say anything that I wouldn't want anyone to hear. I mean, I do <laughs> censor myself a little bit on here, but still, like I feel freer here than I would on Goodreads or yeah. Twitter where you can get fucking dragged. Yeah. And this is, this is, my platform this is our Mm -hmm. platform this is our place okay Mm -hmm. and we can say what we want on our place good read isn't our place twitter isn't our place (laughs) (laughs) so you know (laughs) you get what you get because you know people will come for you on on social Mm -hmm. media oh they will oh they will Mm -hmm. so i have a question for you (laughs) yeah yeah do you ever dnf in the middle of a series like if you oh. started and read a couple books, will you quit in the middle of the series or do you have to finish the series? <sighs> Again, I am like one of those. I used to be a chronic finisher, right? A chronic finisher. But mm-hmm. I did quit my first series mm, a little while ago, actually. And I felt kind of weird about it for like six months. Oh, and then wow. I was okay about it. And that was the Cassandra Clare Mortal Instruments mm-hmm. series. I, I read like the whole first section. And then that final book that kind of pushed off into like the spinoff. I just couldn't. I bought the book and I just couldn't get more than a third through it. I'm like, screw this. I'm done. I don't even care anymore. Mm-hmm. And I kept holding on to the book like well, I'll come back to it. I'll come back to it. And then eventually I'm like, I'm not reading this shit. And I'm done with it. <laughs> Yay! And I was done so with proud it. proud of you. Yeah. And I was shocked because, I mean, I was loving those first, like, what, five books or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it was, like, difficult for me to, like, just stop. But Just quit. 
Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, and I'm halfway, and I hate to say this out loud because Lord knows I always refer to J.R. Ward, but I am feeling like I am on the cusp of quitting the BDB series because the last book was so hard for me to get through. I could not believe it. Join the team. <laughs> I quit her back in 2012. <laughs> That was a rage quit, though. That was a rage quit. Oh. And I always meant to go back and read more. But oh, it's Jesus. been eight years and I just never did. Man, I just finished book 18. And usually in the past, I fly through those books. Like mm. I am done like in two days, three days. That took me like three weeks because I would pick it up, put it down, pick it up, put it down. Mm. And I'm like, oh, why is this taking so long to get moving? Like the whole thing was just painful. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, my God, like, is this a sign I should stop? (laughs) I mean, I still own so many of her books and I bought a bunch of the later ones. And, you know, I always say I'm going to read it and you guys always talk about it. And I'm just like, I don't know, maybe if I'm stuck in quarantine for another three years, I'll get to it. (laughs) But I I have so many other books to read. I know. And it's like it's that feeling of like, I want to be loyal right Mm -hmm. because I've been enjoying them but then it's also man time is precious and that wasn't that great so that's the thing does it take one book for you like let's say you're midway in a series can one book do it for you I'm done or will you yes okay yes and I have a couple examples um so way back like 2010-ish uh, Mary Janice Davidson had a very popular vampire series called Unwed and Undead, and it was hilarious. I read the first five or six books. Like, there was a lot, and I just, I would cry laughing because I loved her sense of humor, and I got it, and it was amazing. And also, I was in high school back then. Like, it was funny, and I loved it. And um, then I read the latest release at the time. And it was just such a terrible book. Like it started with a zombie in the attic and then nothing happened for the entire book. And then it ended talking about the same zombie in the attic. And I was just so upset that I quit her right then. I never read another book of hers until now, which I also DNF'd, but that's a different story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, if a book is shitty... And it pisses me off enough. I will quit right there in the middle of the You're series. You're like, no, done, I'm just like, finish. nope, <laughs> nope. Uh, and you know, I, at the same time, like you, I think maybe someday I'll go back and read more. Maybe someday I'll do some more. I've been saying that eight years for J.R. Ward. Maybe someday I'll go read more. You're I not. haven't. Yeah, you won't. I haven't. It's um, not going to happen. You know, another series I remember quitting with a quickness, though. I did not have any mm. problems quitting this, though. I was just, and it was one of those things. I was like kind of disgusted with it. I'm like, okay, I'm done. And it was easy to cut off. Mm-hmm. And that was the Anita Blake series by Laurel K. Hamilton. That just wasn't for me after book three. I couldn't do it anymore. Mm. I'm like, what the hell's going on here? I'm done. I'm Most people say the first two books are amazing and then it just goes downhill from there. I have them on my TBR pile to maybe try someday, but I don't know. Like it's, why do you want to start something that you're going to have to quit? I was, I think in, well, in that situation specifically, you guys know, if you listen to us at all on this podcast, you know, I love a strong Mm -hmm. heroine. I love like a leading lady who knows what she wants. Mm -hmm. No bullshit. This girl, Anita Blake is so fucking wishy-washy. I can't stand it. (laughs) I can't stand it. I just remembered that so bad. I'm like, are you really doing this? Are are you doing this? Are you letting him do that to you? What are you doing? And I was just (laughs) so I'm like, I can't. (laughs) So I quit. Yeah. I don't blame you. (laughs) I hate wishy-washy heroines. I hate that whole back and forth. I want the strong woman. I want her to come in and kick ass. Mm -hmm. Is that too much to ask for? You know, for some characters, yes. Yes, it is. (laughs) Some authors can't write women like that. so They can't. They can't. Mm -hmm. And that's why I tend to stay away from male authors. Mm -hmm. Just throwing that out there, too. 
Yeah, that should be an interesting conversation as well. Like male authors in certain genres. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. I just don't read them. (laughs) I just don't read them. (laughs) <laughs> that solves my issue you're like save myself from the dnf yeah because i know you're not gonna you know, yeah, no, I won't no, i'm like not it. even gonna yeah i'm not even gonna try mm-hmm. which is funny because i do that like we said with suggestions now mm-hmm. all of that just save myself save yourself guys save yourself if you if someone says to you this book is so great and like let's say you read epic fantasy right that's mm-hmm. all you read is epic fantasy. You love the stuff. Game of Thrones, whatever. You love it. And someone says to you, hey, you should read The Night Circus. It's amazing. Say no. <laughs> okay? Say no. You're not going to like it. Okay? So save yourself. If you know yourself, you know what you like. Just mm-hmm. stick. That will help you not have so many DNFs as well. Speaking of Game of Thrones... This is the longest I ever gave a book. So my entire family has read the series. They binged it. They said it's amazing. They forced me to read it. I pick up the first book. I read 300 pages, which is an entire fucking book. Like I read 300 pages out of 900 and I rage quit because nothing fucking happened. And I was like, how? Why do you like this? There is no plot. There is no pacing. The descriptions are terrible. It's focused on incest more than anything. Like, no, this is trash. Mm -hmm. And I quit. And I'm never going to read any of his books because I don't want to read about incest. I hear you. You can take that and go. Well, I haven't read those books either. And I know I won't. I did like the show. But I know that the show made a lot of changes from the books. And when I hear certain people talking about the books, I'm like, I don't think I would like that. So I didn't, even, I'm not even going to try. Don't, don't even try. <laughs> don't even try. Save yourself. Run away from these god awful books. Oh my gosh. The prose and the pacing. And it's just, ugh. Do you watch Younger on Freeform? I don't. That show so dang on good, but there was one episode where they kind of made fun of uh, George R. R. Martin mm-hmm. by having this other, you know, author who wrote these similar books, and he had these models wearing these different. It was ho- it was fucking hilarious, <laughs> and it's like he's this guy, old guy, just rode around in the scooter, just being oh, appropriate people on the butt, and you know, oh my god, it was freaking hilarious and all i thought of is they are making so much fun of Mm -hmm. that author it was fucking funny yeah it just shows you how like misogynistic it is and all of Mm -hmm. that so i'm like oh my god Mm -hmm. i can't Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. that's a whole nother tangent for another day god you know you guys love these tangents we know you do we love it (laughs) (laughs) the follow-up question kind of tied to that Do you ever DNF based off an author's behavior? Okay. So I haven't, like, I've never been like midway reading something and then heard something and be like, oh, mm -mm, nope, mm, close the book. But I have kind of on purpose decided I'm not going to try anything by them because Mm -hmm. they've done or said something. I think it's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. How about you? Karen Marie Monning. Oh, that's right. Oh, my God. (laughs) I am surprised as fuck that she is not being called out and dragged anymore, Mm -hmm. especially by people who claim that they want to, you know, not read books by pieces of trash people. You know, I was so, when you told me, you know, I'm, I'm like in the dark. I was like, what's going on? What happened? I mean, this is an old story. Like this yeah. happened years ago and people have just forgotten. Oh, I didn't forget. I'm like, well, uh, I didn't forget. But damn, that book, se- that series was so good. Why did you have to do that? Like, why? <laughs> I finished the original five and this happened before Iced came out. And then okay. I just haven't read anything past that five. And I haven't been able to go back and reread any of her stuff. And I'm just like, I enjoyed it when I read it. 
but I don't know if I can read it again. And I don't think I can ever buy anything from her or read anything else from her. I mean, it's a sensitive topic, you know, what had happened with her. Um, So I get it. I get it. I'm like, I did. I think I finished that, but I think I was like almost done when you told me about what happened. And then I started looking it up. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. Um, like, <laughs> yeah no, it's, but I am in the same boat. I can't see myself starting anything, buying anything from her at this point. Not even like secondhand <sighs> books. Yeah. Or from the library or anything. Like, unless somebody physically puts their book in my hand. And forces yeah. me to read it. I don't know. Even then, yeah. I might yell at you. So even a good series, yeah, stop. Just stop. Like it's just too grotesque to continue. And and I'm the kind of person, I'm like you, where I will stop listening to things of people who are doing wrong things, buying things. You talk with your money, right? Your mm-hmm. money is your power when it comes to like certain things. Oh, yes. And some people um that I know will say you can't separate the art from the person I said no I cannot because that person is making money off that art Mm -hmm. so no I cannot so I have stopped cold turkey listening to certain music and I bet you know what music I'm talking about Mm -hmm. (laughs) probably the same person yes I will not listen to anything they produced I will not give it time on Spotify anywhere I don't Mm -hmm. care I will turn the channel if I'm listening to the radio And I'll do the same with these books, because if you are sexist, racist against women, I mean, any I I can't do it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to give you my money. DNF with quickness. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -mm. Mm. And yes, Yes. I am judgmental. And that's okay. So judgy. So (laughs) judgy. This is why we get along. We're so judgy. (laughs) And it works. (laughs) But, you know, you got to stand for something. You show your support (laughs) with your money. And if you exactly, yeah, exactly. So, mm-hmm. girl, yeah. get me going. So, what else about <laughs> DNF? <laughs> oh, the world of DNFing. So, basically, we're saying it's okay to do it. You should, yes, do it. absolutely. Please do it. Don't mm-hmm. force yourself to read crappy books. And I do, okay, side story tangent. Um, You know, there was this series I was reading a long time ago. It was a paranormal series. And it was the first book. And it was just very meh. Like, it wasn't good. I wasn't really liking the hero or the heroine. But the world building was interesting. And I kind of liked the secondary characters. So I pushed myself. And I finally finished it. And the last, I swear, it was like the last 10 pages were really good. And I was like, okay, now I want to read the second book. And then I read the second book and that became just like a phenomenal book. And I loved it. And then I read the third book and that one was also kind of shitty. Mm. (laughs) I was like, I don't, you're very hit or miss with me. Mm. And that was Lynn Vale. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the series, but Lynn Vale was the author. And yeah, like every other book of hers, I like, and then I hate, and then I like, and then I hate. And so I eventually quit her because I didn't want to push myself through the bad books. Yeah. But sometimes, yeah, the last 10 pages will change it for you. So it's also okay to like read the first 100 pages and then jump to the very end. To see how, if you like how it ends. How it ends. Yeah. You know, that actually kind of happened to me in a way with um, the Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J. Moss. Mm -hmm. That was another series where I read the first book for book club. Mm -hmm. So I, at that time I finished the whole book because it was book club, even though I kind of felt iffy about it. You know, that first book was really like a, a reimagining of, you know, Beauty and the Beast or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of like, I didn't really like the retelling. I kind of felt it, eh, eh, eh. but then at book club, someone who has sim- like read a lot of the same books as me, mm-hmm. read the second book and said, oh my God, it gets so good in book two. It's amazing. It's so different from book one. I said, really? <laughs> so I was ready to, I was ready to be done with the shit. Yeah, I was, yeah. but then I'm like, okay, she convinced me. I read book mm-hmm. two and I fucking loved it. I loved it. It was so <laughs> good. I'm like, what happened? Like in book one, it's like maybe she was finding her feet with the 
series or something. Probably. And, it, and it was no longer a retelling. It had its yeah. own story. It took on its own. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh. So on the flip side, that can happen too. When you're ready to be done with something mm-hmm. and then you're- And then somebody's well, like, no, 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 no. You've got to try it again. Like it does get better. I promise. And then yeah. it gets. Yeah. yeah. So that can happen too. Yeah. Anything can happen with books. It gets better. It gets worse. Uh-huh. The author's crazy. You run away. You just <laughs> stop. You forget about it. I have forgotten series. And I don't know, it's like actively DNFing or just like, oh, yeah, I was reading this series and now it's been five years. And I forgot everything about it. You know, that has happened, I think, to me once or twice. I'm like, oh, yeah, I meant to finish that, but I just forgot. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I just forgot. But that tells me it wasn't that good because mm-hmm. if it's that good, I'm not going to forget. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wait the 12 or 13 or 16 months it takes for the next book. Yep. So that says a lot too. Forgetting about books is never good. (laughs) That's almost worse than hating it because I can remember the books I hate Mm -hmm. and I can sit here and just rant about why I hate it. Mm -hmm. But the ones that are just so meh and forgettable, like that's sad. Mm -hmm. I don't want to forget a book. And honestly, I don't. There are a lot of books like that in my red column. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't horrible, but it wasn't good. It was just, it just, just whatever. It was just, eh. Yeah. It was just forgettable. Yeah. It just, it, it's truly sad. Like I don't ever want to feel that way about a book, mm. but I do because mm-hmm. I read so much. Mm-hmm. And I think that happens with the more that you read as well. Mm -hmm. So if you're like the kind of person who reads six books a year with book club or 12 books a year with book club, and that's all you're reading, you -hmm. might like things a little more than people that read 50 or 60 or more books a year. I try to read 200 a year. Oh, girl, girl. Oh, Lord. And that's for fun. That's not what I'm working on edits wise. Like, no, I don't count my edited books. Oh, she's so good, y'all. She's good. I can't. I think my highest year, like in the last five years, I read like 72 books. That was my highest. Oh, wow. Um, and my lowest. That's impressive, though. Well, my lowest was like 52 books, like a book a week. Yeah. No, that's impressive. I know people who maybe read three books a year. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think it's just going to be easier for you to not like things the more you read because you have more you have more context right you Mm -hmm. start to see what's really good and what's Mm -hmm. really not good but and I can give a perfect example I always like to say this but and no offense to anyone if you like this book this is just my personal opinion Mm -hmm. if you liked 50 shades I feel like you don't read a lot of books in that genre or probably in general just because if you had some reference to how other authors write in that genre you might see that it wasn't that good actually but if if that's yeah (laughs) i can rant about this forever i know christian gray was a goddamn rapist and let's just let's just say rapist yeah say that is not how bdsm works yeah and that please 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 be safe if you're yeah. reading it and wanting to do that. Read some other books in that genre. Okay. Read some other books by notable authors. Read that- Tiffany Rice. Right. She People- lives the lifestyle and she's open about that. So like she's done more than her fair share of research. Right. Read people who are known for doing it well. Yes. And then you'll see. So yes. like with that book, I read the first book because everybody was like, oh, read it, read it, read it. I'm like, I was kind of kicking and screaming into it but I read it and I'm like oh I'm done I'm done with this shit never again never (laughs) again I'm done that was one of the ones I got like maybe 70 or 80 pages in and I rage quit over all the grammar mistakes yeah it was was not good it was not good Mm -hmm. but you know again the more you read the more you know (laughs) Mm -hmm. exactly Exactly. it is true and it's just like it's very you know that phrase is like thrown around but it is the truth okay so Mm -hmm. I challenge you I challenge you if you love that book read some more in that genre 
see. And I can recommend better authors. Like Tiffany Rice is amazing. Definitely go read her. But if you want more suggestions, come find me and Mm -hmm. I will help you. I promise. Mm -hmm. See, see, see what I did? See what I started? My bad. (laughs) (laughs) I am literally biting my tongue to not just rant for hours about that book because I can. And I have over a dinner table. Mm-hmm. I had a couple of glasses of wine and I just went off. I mean, it's very hours. problematic, right? It has a lot so of problems. problematic. It's so, so problematic. Please. Yeah. yeah. And I won't ever watch the movies. Like, fuck that noise. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. And I mean, not for nothing, but the chemistry between those two actors they picked. I heard so much bad stuff, like, you know, in the blogs and stuff. Mm. People were saying that there was like no chemistry between those oh. two actors anyway. It was kind of funny. It was kind of comical. I'm like, well, I don't know. That's not my cup of tea. So I don't know. Anywho. Anywho. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Do we have anything else or should we uh, jump into the readers react? I mean, we should probably go over to the readers, let them have their say. Okay. I can keep ranting forever. And they should okay. probably stop. Okay. Well, guys, we are going to take a quick break. It, when we return, we are going to share and give our own thoughts on the comments given to us for the readers react segment. Stay with us. Today's episode is brought to you by the Shelf Addiction Merch Store. Check out all the bookish t-shirts, notebooks, mugs, and more. Don't miss out on these original designs, perfect for any book nerd. Support the podcast and visit shelfaddiction.com forward slash merch and pick up your next favorite bookish item. Okay, welcome back, guys. Woohoo! We're going to start with the voicemail. We got a voicemail from Roxanne on Twitter, and she is going to share with us her thoughts on DNFing. Hi, my name is Roxanne. And yes, I do not force myself to read books that I don't want to read. <laughs> I started a New York Times number one bestseller last week in audiobook form, and the author was reading her own words. And I found that it was making me ang- feel angry. So what's the point of that? (laughs) My life, my choice. Word. Yes, absolutely. And honestly, I do. And that's funny because I do like to read um, memoirs Mm -hmm. from on audiobook when the author is narrating because I feel like that helps me connect more to the Mm -hmm. author and so you can hear their intent like if they're trying to be funny or if they're trying to be sarcastic I think it comes through better versus Mm -hmm. through your own filter when you're reading it oh yeah so definitely like Roxanne said if I'm getting up angry (laughs) (laughs) yeah no you don't want that yeah dnf dude and Mm -hmm. it uh, that is my recommendation for memoirs listen to it on audiobook if they're reading it because Mm -hmm. i feel like your own filter won't be on there and you'll be hearing it how it's intended oh yeah but do you have any favorites you want to suggest real fast or um you know what i think uh honestly michelle obama's book was really good Mm -hmm. um tarashi p henson's book was really good uh Gabriel Union's book was really good and she's one of those actresses that I didn't really care for her I thought man she always looked like she got her nose up in the air <laughs> like I just didn't care for her as yeah, an yeah. actress but someone recommended it to me and I said well fine I'll try it and then I ended up liking her more at the end and oh, um, wow yeah same for Gabare Sidibe she's the woman who is you know her right yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she's on uh, Empire or whatever. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 I liked her story too. I'm like, wow. So I feel like I like these people more mm-hmm. after hearing their own story from their yeah, own. Yeah. 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 No, it's definitely different when you hear it from them. And mm-hmm. it's the same with ebooks or regular books and audio books. Like, um, the narrator puts their own infliction on certain words. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really interesting to have to go back and have the author listen and say, oh, no, I would have put this infliction on this word versus that word. Mm -hmm. No, it's really fascinating. Definitely. So, yeah, DNF it, y'all. If something's making you mad, if you don't like it, just stop. stop. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for the comment, Roxanne. Yes, thank you, Roxanne. All right, I have one from Belle on Facebook. And Belle said, 
I had to put the stand, I think that's what it is, by Stephen King about the big fever down because I was maybe a third into it and struggling and then it got weird. As much as I wanted to read a book of his, I knew that one wasn't for me and it was better to put it down and switch to something else I would enjoy. I'm a big supporter of putting books that aren't interesting or too hard or just not for you down. You only have so much time to read and so many books. Don't waste it on the wrong ones. Yep. Yep. I can yep. find. Although I never did read The Stand. Um, so I don't have an opinion on that book itself. But yes, good for you for stopping <laughs> on that if you didn't like it. So I've never read Stephen King before. Mm-hmm. Just period. Like I don't tend to read horror and I know he's not always horror, but I'm just like, yeah, I don't need to read it. And also I have that rule about not reading books by men because I probably will hate them. <laughs> so <laughs> he has two strikes against him. Oh no. I'm just not going to read his books. Well, I did read a few Stephen King books and I like some of them, but. Well, if you have like any that you highly recommend, I might try it based off your recommendation. No. But anybody else? They're no. not that good. <laughs> um, you know, they're not that good. I'd be recommending them to you of all people. No way. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you don't want to? And then we just have like a bitch sesh. Oh, my <laughs> God. Like... I feel like that would put my reputation at risk if I recommended it. <laughs> Well, I'd read it with the caveat that I know I'm supposed to hate it. Okay. Well, that (laughs) might. Okay. In that that, case. (laughs) We can do it in that, with that context. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We're going to hate read something. We just got finished (laughs) saying you don't have to do that. (laughs) Oh, hate reading is a whole nother thing. Yeah. I will hate read the fuck out of books if I'm in the right mood. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, when you're just in that angry mood and you want to hate something and you just read a book and you're just like, I fucking hate you. Why are you doing this? What's going on? And you just like have to mentally be angry for a little bit. And then you can put it down and walk away and be happy with the world. Oh my oh, yeah. gosh. So do you I'm have, weird. Do you have I'm like weird, a list of books for, that you hate, like for, for hate reading recommendations? Do you have some? I don't have a list. It's I go through Amazon and download whatever freebie book like off their free chart. And I'm like, okay, you sound crappy. Let's go. Yeah. Let's hate read. And then I don't, I don't put that on Goodreads. I don't uh, one star it anywhere. Like I just, this is for me. This mm-hmm. isn't me trying to bash anybody or hurt any author's sales or anything. Like, no, I get the book legally off of Amazon and then I just angry read it. Oh, that is so funny. So oh my that God. Is, that is a thing I do. All right. Well, whatever works, <laughs> whatever works, okay? whatever works. I just make myself a Cosmo or a (laughs) bottle of wine, but you know. (laughs) I mean, there are those days where I get the bottle, you know, just in front of Netflix. You know, it's like watching trashy TV while getting drunk. Mm -hmm. That's my version of hate reading. All right. Guys, let us know if you hate read. I want to (laughs) know who else does it. Who else does it? Who else is weird like me? Yeah. Okay, so we have another comment from Jackie, and she posted in the Shelf Addiction official Facebook group. And she says, till up about a year ago, I always felt I owed it to the story to stick it out until the end. But someone said it best (laughs) 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 when they told me that life is too short to waste time on a book I am not enjoying. I can always go back to it at a later time and try again. Which is true. I still think that. But now I also think that if I really hate it, F that, I'm not going back. But yes, you yes. can go yes. back to it and try again. Because sometimes it's our mood. Like oh, absolutely. Right, yeah. And the perfect situation is right now with the coronavirus, mm-hmm. COVID-19, everybody is in their own feelings about things mm-hmm. right now. And it's possible that your feelings on life could be affecting how you're reading. Oh, absolutely. I usually read a lot of contemporary romance and I can't read that right now. So I'm going back to paranormals and, you know, sometimes the funny stuff just doesn't hit the mark with me. So I have to put it down and it's nothing on the author or the book. Like I know eventually someday I will read it and love it, but Mm -hmm. your mood dictates everything and the, the whole quarantine coronavirus. Yeah. And I think that's a great idea to DNF stuff if you're not feeling it right now because you don't want to be giving two-star ratings for something you might actually like later. Mm -hmm. 
So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jackie, for the comment. Thank you, Jackie. Yes, I have one more comment from Karen on Facebook. And Karen says, I feel the need to always finish the book. I just can't stop. I can't put it down. I picked it up and I have to keep going. I owe it to the author. I owe it to the book. I owe it to myself to finish. Hmm. Well, Karen, if it makes you happy to finish the book, finish the book. Like that's, yeah. that's fine. There's yeah. nothing wrong with finishing. There's no, nothing not. bad about that. Yeah, you do you, girl. I mean, if that yeah. makes you feel like accomplished that you finished it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do it. All right. See, someone that has a different point of view. Yay! <laughs> but we support that. We support yes, that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. If it makes you feel good, do it. Yeah, absolutely. My hate reading makes me feel good. You know, <laughs> I'm weird for that. So yeah. I hear you. Okay, so we have another comment from Alicia, who is the founder and president, I think, of Mocha Girls <laughs> Read. She shared on Twitter, I used to be the person that finished the year with zero DNF books, but life is short and staying committed to a book that you don't love is hard. But that, but that being said, I think I might try and finish a few of them since I'm in quarantine. <laughs> Now's I the mean, time. That's fair. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Mm-hmm. Come back to them since you're not doing anything else. Yeah. If you have the time to read stuff, I have like 5,000 books on my TBR pile. I'm probably not going to go back. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Girl, you do it. Let me know what book you yeah. go back and, and finish from that DNF pile. And if you like it afterward. Yeah. Yeah. Did it pay off? (laughs) Yeah. Did it pay off? Yeah. Let us know. Okay. I have one more from Twitter and that is from another shelf addiction co-host classy. Uh, She says, I have decided to give books 10 to 25% of my time before I DNF it. If it is a book club selection, I push through because it is book club. There are times where I have gone back to a book that I DNF'd and finished it because I realized I was not in a good headspace. So she talks about yeah. several of the things that we just mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. Classy is one of us. Yes. Yes. She's a die art reader. She's my ride or die with the <laughs> thriller and mystery titles. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I agree with Classy. I mean... I still kind of push through, but I might do your suggestion, Casey, and just skip to the end if it's really just bad. Skip to the end. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I'm like, mm, and for the ow. most part with authors, you can figure out what happened. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah. And then you can still yeah. have a conversation without being tortured. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a good thing to me. <laughs> all right. That is it. That's all we have from our readers react segment i hope you guys enjoyed this new segment i'm excited to keep doing it so yes yes yes, we want to hear from you Mm -hmm. so like we mentioned earlier be sure to follow us join facebook uh, facebook group shelf addiction official and you will know when we ask for more readers react comments yes yes Yes. so are we done for today's conversation okay so again comment below comments on facebook Let us wherever know. yeah give yeah. us feedback on this episode i would love it and yes me done. too yes we are done for today <laughs> uh so we will see you on the next episode and until then happy reading take care happy guys. reading If you enjoyed today's book chat episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcast and leave a positive five-star review. You can follow me on Twitter at Shelf Addiction. Most importantly, you can share this podcast with friends and family that enjoy all things bookish, including author interviews. Thank you for listening, and until next time, happy reading. Right now, you need dependable internet and endless entertainment. Xfinity delivers with reliably fast speeds and Wi-Fi coverage throughout your home. Plus, access all your streaming apps in one place right on your TV. To schedule your free contactless equipment delivery, click or call. Restrictions apply. What makes a home a home and not just a house? What makes a couch iconic? And what will the home of the future look like? 
On the couch, we'll be speaking to some design masters and a host of curators and experts as we go about answering the key questions concerning the home today. The Couch, Conversations on Design, is a brand new podcast made by B&B Italia. Listen on Apple Podcast, Spotify, Google Podcast and bebitalia.com.